folks, this is Radiac. How's it going? Well, this afternoon I'm finally getting to go and see Skyfall, the new James Bond film. When I say the new James Bond film, it's actually been out for like the past two months, but now is the only time I've got to go and actually have time to go and see it. As you can probably tell from the sound of my voice, I've not been feeling that well the past couple of days. I kind of bummed up with a cold, but I want to see this film, so this is the only time I'm going to get to go and see it. And I figured, hell, even though I'm really ill at the moment, why not do a review for you? So this is like the before and after. So I'm going to go see the film and then tell you how what I thought of it. Just before I go and do that, I should mention that the last Bond film I saw way back in 2008, Quantum of Solace, people who know me well will know that I think it's the worst Bond film ever made. So surely Skyfall can't be any worse than that, right? Here's hoping. I have faith in Sam Mendes being the director because he doesn't usually direct crap films. But apart from Sam Mendes and one or two trailers, I don't know anything about this film. I have been keeping away from all spoilers, all reviews. I've told my friends that have seen it to not tell me anything about it. And fortunately they've complied. So I'm going in pretty much blind apart from my love of the franchise as a whole. So, I'm off to see it. I'll be back in just a moment to let you know what I thought of it. Okay, so it, go it goes without saying that there will be spoilers from this moment on. So, I finally got to see Skyfall, and the big question is, was it worth it? And the answer for me anyway would be a resounding yes. I really enjoyed this film. Really enjoyed it. There were some bad bits, or bits that could have been handled a bit better, and I'll touch on them towards the end of this impromptu review, but um, there was a lot of positives to, uh, to come away with after watching Skyfall. First things first, Daniel Craig's performance was a positive, as Bond. Now, I know Casino Royale was a great film, but personally my opinion was that he hadn't really grown into the role of Bond yet. I'm not saying he was bad in that film, I'm just saying he wasn't perhaps Bond yet. He's a good actor, Daniel Craig. He was a good actor when Casino Royale, Casino Royale first came out. But in my mind, anyway, in a lot of other people's eyes, he wasn't truly Bond. Then Quantum of Solace came out two years later, and that was a very bad performance. But of course, you could have put Sean Connery or Roger Moore or Pierce Brosnan in that role, and the film would have still sucked because that film is terrible. But here, he's finally growing into the role, and his portrayal of Bond has actually changed somewhat. He's still a darker, grittier Bond than his predecessors, excepting maybe Timothy Dalton, who was also supposed to be a darker, grittier Bond. But they actually added some touches of humour to his character. There was quite a few times where he dropped some one-liners. Some of them weren't particularly memorable, because unfortunately I can't remember off the top of my head what a lot of them were. But there is a really funny exchange about the exploding pen, when he's talking to Q in the, in the gallery, and, he, and he, he's uh, says in disgust, is that it? When he's a gun in the radio, and he says, "Well, maybe you'd like an exploding pen too." All right, well, maybe that wasn't that was actually Bond's line. That's more that there's a lot more overall humour and light lightness of touch in this film, and that's the common thing about Skyfall. It manages to have both light moments and dark moments, but neither of them really overshadow the other. And Bond does have some good one-liners, but unfortunately, I can't remember them off the top of my head. Another positive performance, well there were two of us actually, Ginny Dench as M. Obviously, and this is the big spoiler which caught me quite a bit by surprise and I'll talk a bit more later on when I talk about overall plot. M is dead. That's Ginny Dench's last ever Bond film. I didn't know this was coming and they really, they hinted that it, she might die throughout the film but they didn't actually, you know, signpost it to too much, which is good, so it still caught me by surprise when it actually happened. Her actual performance, you really got the feeling that M was under the gun in this film. Obviously her handling of the situation with the list and her handling with getting Bond shot in the opening seconds of the film, sorry, opening minutes of the film, you have to bear with me guys, I'm still full of a cold, still feeling a little ill, but this film deserves to be reviewed, so here I am reviewing it. Uh, her decision to have Bond get shot in the opening minutes, the list being delivered and ultimately into the death of three British agents and pro possibly more that weren't touched on, the bomb at the uh, at the MI6 building, you really got the feeling like M's career was falling apart. 
that speech she gave to the MP uh, when she quoted uh, Lord Lord Tennyson, Alfred Lord Tennyson, really strong moment. And then, of course, it, it was juxtaposed with uh, Silver coming in and uh, attacking the place. But no, I, I thought Judy Dench is one of our finest British actresses, and it really showed in this film. She's had strong performances at M in the past, most notably in the Brosnan era. The World Is Not Enough is, in some respects, M's film. M's strongest film to date. God knows she's in the background. Someone ever dies, she's in the background. What What Is Not Enough onwards, she's more of a of a featured character rather than being a, sort of a boss hidden in the background. Her relationship with Bond is an interesting one because in Casino Royale, she doesn't seem to get on with him. Quantum of Solace, she really doesn't get on with him until the end of the film. She believes him to be a liability and she cancels his credit card and basically declares him a rogue agent for a large part of Quantum of Solace. I really don't want to keep mentioning Quantum of Solace because it is a terrible film but uh, and Skyfall deserves to be <laughs> categorised far away from it as possible. Seriously, it's that good. But in this film, actually you see that she does respect Bond. She lies to keep him on active service because he didn't pass the tests. He actually failed them miserably. But she lies and says he barely scraped through them, so therefore he's back on active service. And for his part, Bond clearly respects M. It's a little bit of a stretch, but I'll allow it because it was fairly obvious that in the older films, M and Bond did have an understanding of each other. And so I like that that kind of parlayed into this film and the way you can really tell that Bond felt something for M in terms of friendship and perhaps respect is after she again spoilers she's dead in the, at the end of the, uh, of the film and he's crying over her dead body also the strongest performance Javier Bardem really really strong performance as the villain Silva slash Diego Rodriguez uh, I think he might I might be wrong in saying this, but I think I'm right. He is the first openly gay main Bond villain. Obviously we had Mr. Winter, Mr. Kidd in Diamonds of Forever, but unless you count Elliot Carver, and he wasn't really gay because he had a wife, he was just unbelievably camp. I took that scene where he was feeling up Bond's legs to prove that he was gay. It might have just been, as, as a friend has suggested to me, that he was just trying to see how far Bond could go, how much he could take before he objected or, or said something or reacted. But no, I, I think that whole scene was there to show that Silver slash Rodriguez was gay. It took me a lot of time when the trailer came out to get used to a blonde Javier Bardem, but I've since read that the, because I was keeping away from all the spoiler material, as I, as I said earlier, I've since read that that was actually his idea, along with Sam Mendes, the director, to come up with a unique look for his character, the blonde hair. And I think for the most part it worked. The really cool thing about his character though is his backstory, how he was a, a former favourite of M's and then she sells him out, and that's another thing about M, you, she's not a good guy in the traditional sense of the word here. She definitely has her dark secrets, she definitely has her past secrets, but for the most part she remains a good guy despite this. Silver, of course, is her sins. When, when it keeps saying think on think on your sins, he is the sin that she's refer that he's referring to about her. She sold him down the river, he bit into his cyanide suicide capsule, and it burnt his insides. And that scene where he takes the plate out of his mouth and his whole face deforms, that's really chilling. I couldn't I didn't work out at first what was happening. And then I realized what was happening when his face sort of collapsed on itself. And apparently that plate also, although it wasn't specifically mentioned in the film, that's also his voice box. Because his voice kind of goes a bit funny when he pulls it out. And it, I thought his voice was too funny because his face had sort of collapsed on itself and he couldn't properly speak. But no, the acid also burned his voice box. So yeah, a really interesting character. Slightly sympathetic because of what happened to him. But then again, it was kind of his own fault because he went beyond his remit. I'm not saying that because he went beyond his remit, he deserved to be burned in, uh, inside alive by acid. Also interesting that the, the main villain's motivation in this film is personal revenge. We've seen personal revenge as a motive for Bond villains before. I think most notably uh, Colonel Moon, when he becomes Gustav Grey's revenge is part of it. 
And also, Goldfinger at the end of that film, revenge is part of his plan. But revenge is not usually their only motive. This film, oh, Electric King, well, is not enough. I suppose that's kind of revenge on M and her father as well. But this entire plot by Silver is set up solely so he can kill M. That's entirely his modus operandi. And I personally think it's a nice breath of fresh air. And it actually makes logical sense. If you have a head of a secret service, it's logical she's going to have made past mistakes and have secrets in her past. And it's only logical she's going to have made enemies that are going to want to come after her. And Silver represents those enemies. So that was, as I say, a really good villain. I think he's quite a memorable villain. He's more memorable than the complete waste of oxygen that was that ordinary guy from Quantum of Solace whose name I can't even remember. Dominic Green, that's it. What kind of a villain, villain name is Dominic Green? But anyway, I digress. Raul Silver. I think his first name was Raul. He was just referred to as Silver. That's more of a villain name, even though it sounds a bit like a Batman character. But no, I think Javier Bardem played the villain role really well. I also think, uh, even though he, it was kind of a blink and you'll miss it cameo towards the last 20 minutes, Albert Finney as the gamekeeper, Kincaid, I thought he was pretty good. Uh, I, I, I read somewhere that Sean Connery was originally going to be the gamekeeper, but they decided against it. I'm really glad they decided against that, because that would have really cheapened the role of the gamekeeper. If, oh look, it's the first Bond, and he's suddenly the role of the gamekeeper. Yeah, that would not have really <laughs> been very plausible to the audience, I'm guessing. However, a couple of the characters for me just didn't fly. Oh, I should also mention Mallory, uh, the new M, as he becomes at the end of the film. Ray Fiennes. Really refreshing to see Ray Fiennes play a character that wasn't a villain in a, in a film that came out in the past 10 years, because <laughs> I'm so used to him playing Voldemort in the Harry Potter films. I really like the character of, uh, character of Mallory. He starts off as you think he's just another sort of uh, bureaucrat. The way he's criticising M, and you think he's position itself possibly to take over M's job or at least to move somebody into M's role and then he sacrifices himself in the shooting scene at the court he actually saves M's life temporarily it's obvious he's a character with some depth to him and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with him I'm hoping that Ralph, Ralph, Ralph Fiennes so Ralph Fiennes, Ralph Fiennes agrees to play the role again in future Bonds, because I think he could actually make a really good M. I'm not sure if he'll be able to get as involved as Judy Dench did in her time as M, but we'll just see what the future brings. But yeah, Mallory, good character. Eve Moneypenny, I think the weakest character in the entire film. I'm not... I, I don't know who Naomi Harris is. I've not seen any films of her previous. I don't think she did that good of a job as... Uh, Eve. I mean, technically Eve is the Bond girl, but she didn't really do a right lot. Okay, she shoots Bond at the, at the beginning, that's significant. But then what's her role? She shows up, she has sex with Bond, she shows up in the courtroom inexplicably, and then she's not seen again to the end of the film. That's her entire role, and we suddenly find out she's Miss Moneypenny, and by the way, cue the racist idiots <laughs> yelling that Miss Moneypenny is suddenly a black woman. I like the idea that Miss Moneypenny originates as a field agent who then decides that she's better behind the desk as, as a secretary of, obviously, the new M, Mallory. I just don't think that it was acted very well by Naomi Harris. And I've read, uh, since I've got to see the film, I've read a couple of reviews that basically single her out as the single weakest performance, and I think that's right. I also think the other quote-unquote Bond girl, although I question whether she was, Severine, what... What was Severine's purpose in the film? I mean, she's in it for all of ten minutes. She first shows up after Bond has killed Patrice the assassin and thrown him off the, the building in China. Is she meant to be the second Bond girl? And what is this fascination? They always have to kill a Bond girl off in the modern films. Every time there's been two girls that Bond has been involved with, one of them has died. Quantum of Solace, you had... Solange and... Uh, Solange, oh my god. Uh, I can't even remember her name, but the, the main girl that kills the Russian general... Uh, Russian general. This is why I shouldn't do reviews on it all, folks. Kills General Madrano at the end of the film. I can't remember her name. But she's played by Olga Kalenko. She survives. 
Agent Fields dies. Considering how Festival Lynn dies, although, of course, that was dictated by the plot and the, and the, and the original book. Well, it's Dr. Duff, Electric King dies while Christmas Jones lives. Die another day, Miranda Frost dies. Technically, while being a villain, she's still a Bond girl because she goes to bed with Bond and she's a psychic for a while. While Jinx lives, I could go through other examples, but what is this fascination? If there's two girls, one of them has to die. And what was Severine's role? She shows up after uh, Patrice's maid is killed, then Bond has killed Patrice. She's in the casino, she says, These men are going to try and kill you, but if you survive, um, kill my lover for me, I'm on the yacht. And then she's taken to a rock, and then she's shot dead by Silver. Was that really, was that entire role necessary? <laughs> I mean, well, maybe it was to show how cruel Silver was. I like the backstory that she was a sex slave from uh, the Chinese gangs, or had been sold by the Chinese gangs. I don't think she actually was Chinese. I mean, Severine sounds more French than Oriental as a name. But they didn't really, she didn't really do much in the film for me. I think that's a character that could have been explored more, or possibly could have done more. Bond could have possibly saved her. And when she's killed, Bond doesn't really show much concern. I mean, he, he deliberately misses her. This is what I took it to mean anyway. You can argue this all you like down below in the comments, but he deliberately misses shooting her. Or maybe he just missed because he's not that good a shot because of what happened at the beginning of the film. And then Ralph Silver shoots Severine bang straight in the head and the whiskey goes drops. And what does Bond say? Terrible waste of whiskey, that. So he's more concerned about the whiskey than he was about the girl he's just shot dead in the forehead. Okay then. I guess we're taking that Daniel Craig's Bond is still a heartless bastard at heart. I I get that he didn't really have that much of a connection to and that maybe that's what he, it was hinting at because even though he goes to bed with these women he doesn't have a connection to all of them. I get that. And also she technically wasn't a good guy either because she, she did conspire in the assassination and she was asking Bond to kill Silver. Although at the time he didn't know it was Silver. So, anyway, that, that was my problem with Severine. I've read about the characters, now I'm going to talk about the actual plot. The opening sequence to the title sequence, really good, really good. I've seen a lot of this in trailers and a couple of uh, preview clips that have been released prior to the film coming out, which is the only sort of spoiler material I was allowing myself to watch. The sequence with the digger. That was really good, although what was the purpose of the depleted uranium bullet? It didn't really serve much of a purpose. Bond gets shot by it, but then and then it's brought up by uh, Tanner. And then I don't think its significance is ever mentioned ever again. It might be how they traced Silver. It says it's not, because they traced Silver by, by a Severine. But, okay, that's a slight plot hole. The title sequence, as sung by Adele, really like the Bond theme for this one. Adele, really strong singer, and she really let it all out in the title sequence. I also like how, once again, the title sequence actually foreshadowed what you were going to see in the film. Bond's in it, Silver's in it, I think M's in it briefly, and Skyfall House, which at the time you didn't know what it was, is in it and gets melted down, foreshadowing it's going to get destroyed. On the subject of that, I didn't know that uh, Bond's house was called Skyfall. Big, film, uh, big fan that I am. So can someone confirm that it wasn't called that in the books, or it was called that in the books. Have they just invented that for this film? Either way, kind of a nice touch that that's why the film is called Skyfall, because I couldn't work out why on earth it was called that at first. And then, of course, he took him to his childhood home, and it all became revealed. So, that was a nice touch. I'm getting sidetracked again. I thought the plot was actually pretty good, and heaven forbid, Sam Mendes actually gave time for the plot to be explained. Quantum of Solace is just action sequence, action sequence, action sequence, no room to breathe. Skyfall is completely opposite. It gives you plenty of time to digest what you're seeing on the screen. It has some pretty good action sequences, don't get me wrong, but they're broken up. So the audience gets a chance to breathe and that's the right thing to do, even in an action film like in James Bond, Skyfall. So kudos to Sam Mendes for doing that. And kudos to Sam Mendes for making it both light and dark in parts, and not allowing either of them to uh, balance each other. So, I like the plot, I think it was plausible. As I said, I really like the idea of an ex-employee coming to take revenge on M. 
I love the idea that he was one step ahead of them the entire time, like everything. Patrice, the bomb explosion, him getting allowing himself to be captured, that was all part of the plan to get M. Obviously, at the end, it goes wrong, but I like that. Now, I can't put it off any longer. Let's talk about that ending, because dear God, wow, I had no idea this was coming. So, Bond takes him to his childhood house, Skyfall, meets Albert Finney, the gamekeeper, King Cade. They fight off a whole ton of guys in what can only be described as using Home Alone traps. Seriously, at one point, M flicks a switch and a nail bomb shoots out. If that's not Home Alone inspired, I don't know what is. Now, at first I was confused when exactly she got the fatal bullet wound that eventually killed her. But it actually turns out it was during the initial wave of guys she got shot in the abdomen. Re remember when King Cade asks her, are you, okay? are you hurt? And she just says, just my pride. Apparently that's when the fatal bullet was, uh, it hit her. It's a really ballsy move by Sam Mendes to kill off M. And it was actually announced this was Judy Dench's last film as, uh, as M in Bond. But I never once suspected they were going to kill her. But that's repeating what I said. So yeah, really strong beginning, really strong ending, and everything in the middle made sense. That's all I ask of a Bond film, really, and is this an all-time classic Bond film? Too early to say. Some people are already calling it the best Bond film ever, and I think that's that's way premature. I mean, Goldfinger, that set the yardstick, and it's way up here. I'm going to have to get Skyfall on DVD and watch it again before I can even put it in my list of top 10, bottom 10, whatever. I don't think it's going to be in the bottom 10, that's for sure. I enjoyed it certainly as much as Casino Royale, possibly even more so, and I would really recommend anyone that's watched it to get it on DVD when it comes out, because I think it's worth it and it deserves it. And anyone who hasn't seen it, and uh, if you haven't seen it, why were you listening to this? <laughs> Please go and see it before it's too late, because it is leap years ahead of Quantum of Solace. If that film put you off seeing Bonds again for life in the cinema, this one should reassure you that the Bond franchise is in relatively safe hands. If they can produce another film like Skyfall when the next Bond film comes out, I think the franchise is safe. So this went on far longer than I intended it to. This has just been a little review slash rant about Skyfall. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments below, and I'll hopefully see you all very shortly. Till then, bye for now.